okay, normally I start off with some happy music. Do, 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 boom, boom, do, 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 do. I can't play the happy music because I've got a special guest who is uh, on the show, and I'm going to get to her in just a couple of minutes. Now, before I do, a couple of things I want you to do, um, and that is uh, share the video, would you please? Let people know. Also, check in. I want to know who you are. Where are you a deplorable from? Check in. Let us know. Got a big show coming up. Investigative journalist Laura Loomer is here again, and she has been uh, doing better work than anybody else when it comes to what's going on in in, uh, Las Vegas. And we're going to talk with her in just a couple of minutes. Before we do... And uh, again, I want to thank you for being here. I'm sorry I don't have the good music. Do 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 do. Ba ba da ba ba. I want to remind you to do me a favor, if you would please, and that is, would you please uh, support our sponsors? Our sponsor today. First of all, we want to thank our great. Uh, friends at Right Wing News, official Right Wing News. They are uh, on Facebook at rightwingnews.com. They are the they power the Rusty Humphreys Rebellion. And tonight's sponsor, Wax RX. Wax RX. Laura Loomer is here. But here before I before I officially bring you on, I'm just going to bring you on for a second here. Laura, do you ever have wax in your ears, Laura Loomer? Not really. I mean, I clean my ears pretty religiously. Okay, every that's, morning. Okay, that's good. Yeah. I have bad earwax. It drives me nuts. It's like twice a year. It's like I can't hear anything, and I get dizzy. And so I got to go to the doctor, Laura, and it takes 150 bucks and a few hours, and it's it's a mess. But not anymore. You know why? Why? Wax RX, Laura Loomer. Wax RX. Wax RX is a system where you can clean your ears at home with a system just like the doctors use. It's very simple. It's easy. I had it here. As a matter of fact, a couple nights ago, I couldn't sleep. I pulled this thing out, and it saved me, and I'm so glad. Anyway, so uh, so I'll, I'll put you back, uh, and I'll come back huh. to you again in a second, Laura. But Wax, Wax RX. Remember, what's it called again, Laura Loomer? Wax RX. That's right. You know where you, where you get it? Where do you buy it? WaxRx.com. Can you remember okay. that? Okay. Waxrx.com, yeah. <laughs> she's so she's so <laughs> excited about it. Okay, so yes, do support our great sponsor, Waxrx.com. Let's do some check-ins, then we'll talk with Laura in a second here. I want to say hello to everybody. Again, check in. Where are you deplorable from? Give me some thumbs up. Give us some likes. Uh, share the video. Let people know. Donald is here checking in. Gail is checking in. Uh, Gail shared the video from Maine. Thank you, Gail. Uh, George is in Seattle. Charlie is in Ohio. Alvin is in Cleveland. Wendy is in North Carolina. Jason says, hey, Rusty. How you doing, Jason? Um, let's see here. Sam is in Florida. Sam, great to see you there. Thank you very much. Lo- hope you're having a, uh, a great, great night. Uh, Jack is in Utah, transplant from Georgia. Jenny is in Minnesota, says, woohoo! Uh, Faith is there in North Carolina. Steve one has the uh, has a list of the definition of treason. Lance is in Westminster, South Carolina. Kay is here. I'll get some more of you guys, but Laura's sitting, sitting here. She's busy. She's a big-time journalist. She has really hit the scene and gone from just being a, co- a, a college student to be in somebody that's making news, right, Laura? I mean, you were a college student not that long ago, were you? Yeah, no, just about three years ago or so. I was in college. <laughs> what school did you go to? Uh, I was to school in Miami, a place called Barry University, which I was ultimately kicked out of a month prior to graduation. But, How but do, yeah. I mean, what did you do? Did you, like, get in a fight? Did you, like, uh, beat up some guy or something? No, I wish it was, uh, you know, something like that. No, I'm just kidding. It's actually more exciting. Yeah. So I created an ISIS club to prove a point about political correctness on my college campus and to just show how absurd universities were. And I wanted to see if the university would allow me to get funding, student funding for a pro ISIS club that would send aid overseas to terrorists. And they did. They allowed me to create my pro ISIS club and they were totally on board with me donating money and school supplies to ISIS terrorists and their widows and their children. And so I I made this video when I was working with James O'Keefe my senior year of college, and they just didn't like it because, you know, obviously it received a lot of media attention, and so they kicked me out. So did you not get to graduate, or did they let you graduate? 
Well, I ended up getting a lawyer and I ended up getting my diploma, but I wasn't allowed to go to graduation despite the fact that I was valedictorian. You were the valedictorian? Yeah, and wow. I wasn't allowed to go to my own graduation. I, I, They didn't even let me meet the valedictorian in my school. That's how far down the <laughs> list I was. All right, well, um, you've done a lot of things. For folks who don't remember, let's just kind of, some of the things that you've done recently. You were the crazy chick that went to uh, New York and in the middle of the William Shakespeare play, uh, Julius Caesar, when they were having a guy that Julius Caesar looked like Donald Trump, you got in the middle of it, and shame on you. You were yelling at him, right? Yeah, no, I interrupted the assassination scene. But, um, yeah, that's that's the thing that really kind of, um, you know, propelled me into the public light. I'd done a lot of influential work before, just kind of undercover working with Project Veritas. But that was one of my, um, you know, my first, uh, you know, public public videos, public stunts, if some people want to call it a right. stunt. And it wasn't uh, that but, long ago. That's the thing that I, I'm really, you know, and you and I have talked before. Right. I mean, it's very impressive that, it, it, what are we talking, three, four months ago, I think? In June, yeah, June. June. And then uh, after that, you were the one that uh, went up to, you waited in line after you'd had surgery, waited in line all day at, what, a Costco or something, or a bookstore, and, and went after Hillary Clinton, right? Yeah, at Barnes Noble the day she was launching her book, What Happened, so I confronted her. And, you know, I just asked her, asked her what happened, what happened to all your emails, what happened in Benghazi, what happened to Seth Rich, what happened to all the money that was supposed to go to the people in Haiti, what happened to your health? And uh, so that was also, you know, a pretty viral video. And then I created the We Happen tour that would encourage citizen journalists to confront Hillary Clinton at her book signing events and things like that. So and then she kind of stopped doing as many, right? Yeah, well, she recently broke her toe. The other day, she supposedly fell. That's that's what they want you to think. She fell and broke her toe. You don't believe her? I mean, I don't think it's as simple as her falling. I mean, there's probably something else involved. I mean, we do know Hillary Clinton likes to drink a lot. So, <laughs> uh, Although I've heard that her and Bill aren't talking, that he got mad about the book. Did you hear that story? Well, I just don't know why they would talk anyway. Like, mad about the book. Like, is she not, they're not talking anyway, regardless, because of all of his, like, you know, sexual infidelity and things like that. I mean, geez, if it's really a book that's going <laughs> to end think the so? relationship between Bill and Hillary, I don't know what to say. Oh, that's funny. Okay, so then the other thing you've gotten into now is the story of what has been happening in Las Vegas. And, of course... Right. It's broken all of our hearts. We all are Vegas strong. Um, it's terrible. Um, but but qu people are questioning everything. And it seems everybody wants to throw a conspiracy theory into this. And isn't it possible it just was one guy who got mad and, and did all these things? Or you don't think that, do you? What, what do you think? What is it that you're finding out? No, I don't believe that it's just one guy, right? And even if it was one guy, they would already know the motive. They would already have the information and probably like the intel, right? We have every single government agency on this, the federal level and local level working on this investigation. And, you know, there's just a lot of inconsistencies, right? There, there were witnesses on the ground and people who were inside the hotel who swore that different weapons were being used. Um, it just, if you look at the profile of this individual, Stephen Paddock, who they've named as, as the shooter, he's a 64 year old male, not exactly in the best shape. He, um, doesn't have, you know, massive amounts of like military weapons training or anything like that. And how was he able to carry 400 pounds of, of weapons and explosives and ammunition up to his room on the 32nd floor unnoticed? And carry out a massacre on his own. Okay, so is, a lot of things that aren't do, okay. Up, do you I, believe that he didn't do it? Is he as you know, uh, Lee Hart, Lee Harvey Oswald said about when he did the JFK assassination? I'm a patsy. I'm a patsy. I didn't have anything to do with it. Do you believe that? I think there were multiple shooters, and whether or not Stephen Paddock is one of them, I mean, his body is the body that was in the room, and. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we have to go off of what law enforcement tells us. And it's just unfortunate because, you know, this is the information they're giving to us. And that's the only dead body that we're seeing inside the room. Yeah. And we've already we've already seen that law enforcement has not been honest with this investigation. And they're not really um, being, you know, like direct and and open and transparent about the facts of the case. I mean, I've already caught them lying. So 
you know, I don't want to sound conspiratorial, but I just have doubts about every single aspect of this investigation. Well, right. I mean, yeah. one thing for folks who don't know, you uh, almost what a week earlier, you had said, "Hey, um, we I, I have information that that this guy was the shooter was was in the hotel before the police said he was." Right. Yeah. So the FBI and the uh, LVMPD and Sheriff Lombardo, they were you know, perpetuating this false narrative that Stephen Paddock checked into the Mandalay Bay 32nd room or 32nd floor uh, suite on this, the 28th, right? The 28th of September. Mm -hmm. And I actually received documentation and information from inside the hotel and sources who work there who told me that, no, he actually checked in on the 25th. But why, why would FBI and LVMPD want to hide the fact that he checked in three days earlier? I mean, when you think about it, just the date, it seems really innocent, right? But if they're intentionally going out of their way to, to hide this, what is so significant about those three days? What happened between the 25th and the 28th that was so significant that the FBI lied to the American people and carried out a misinformation campaign do you, I mean, do you have a, do you have a theory at this point or you're still just investigating? I think there are multiple shooters or other individuals in the room or accomplices. And that's what they're trying to hide because either a, they just don't know who those people are or B like, it just shows such a lack of, you know, a, a, a huge intelligence failure on their part because there were room service receipts that I also obtained from inside the hotel that show that, uh, there was an order for room service placed for two. Right. In order for two people for Stephen Paddock's room. So why why are police and FBI trying to tell the American people that nobody was checked into the room besides Stephen Paddock and that there were no guests and no one else was inside the room and and, you know, that he was by himself? That's mm. obviously not the case, because one person isn't going to place an order for a cheeseburger and two Pepsis and a bowl of soup and a bagel with cream cheese and a Pellegrino. And, you know, mm. who, who eats that in one setting? OK, Um now, the latest story, and you were one of the first ones to break this, too, about the, the hero. Well, what's his name again? The Jesus Campos. Right. And so he, the original story was he was a hero, and then we found out a little bit later that he may have been shot before it all started. I mean, quickly remind us on this. Right. So when this all happened, the sheriff and the FBI were very quick to make a hero out of Jesus Campos, who's this Hispanic security guard who worked at Mandalay Bay, who was supposedly shot by Stephen Paddock during the shooting. Then it comes out that actually the timeline is incorrect. And Jesus was actually shot six minutes prior to Stephen Paddock committing the massacre. So how is he a hero? Right. Like just getting shot in the leg doesn't make you a hero. If, it, if you waited six minutes and nothing happened and you didn't really stop this guy from committing a massacre or interrupt him, you're not a hero. You're mm -hmm. just, you know, collateral damage or maybe even a suspect. Who knows? I mean, we're not even getting the full the full story regarding Jesus Campos. But so then I started digging into this guy, right, because his timeline was changing. It was just very suspicious. And I thought to myself, why is this guy who is supposedly a hero being so quiet and keeping away from the media? So it turns out that this, this Jesus Campos guy doesn't even have a legitimate security clearance to work as a security guard in the casino. Hmm. He's not even in their official employee database system. MGM, following his disappearance, right, when they put him into hiding to close him off from uh, the public, they, they scrubbed him from their official employee database. So I went to the house and I tried to confront them. He has armed security outside protecting yeah, him. I saw that video and you were, you were kind of questioning the security guy and he didn't seem to know anything. Well, I mean, I'm sure he knows a lot, but they're just being told not to say anything because right. because if they're keeping Jesus Campos under lockdown with armed security, there's obviously something very serious going on that they don't want people knowing about if they're sequestering him, right? And he was supposed because to be on, on Sean Hannity's show and he canceled last minute, right? He canceled on Sean Hannity last minute. So I started doing some more, you know, I, I, con I continued my investigation into this problematic figure. And it turns out that Jesus Campos, he has a shared social security number, right? So let's just break down the facts. You have a very suspicious young Hispanic male who's only been working for MGM or Mandalay Bay for three months, doesn't have a security license. His tags on his car um, are expired. And the car isn't even registered to him. It's starting to look like the car belongs to somebody else. 
And then on top of that, he has a shared social security number that's registered to another individual by the name of Jesus Quinteros. So a lot of people think that Jesus Campos is Jesus Quinteros because his mother's maiden name is Quinteros. But regardless of whether or not he's, you know, an illegal alien who's using somebody else's social, you, it's against the law to have two names registered to one social security number. I mean, that's the definition of social security fraud or identity fraud. Okay. So you've, you've discovered it now. Why, now, so he showed up today on, at Ellen DeGeneres' show. Yeah. Did that surprise you? Well, you know, they kept it very hush-hush as to what he was doing, and they said that he didn't want to tell his story. But then while they said that, he was actually, what, in California, clearly, on the set of Ellen DeGeneres. But it's so unethical the way they've gone about doing this because a lot of people don't know this, but Ellen DeGeneres has her own contract and deal with MGM Casinos, too. She has Ellen DeGeneres slot machines that have her face and like her brand and her voice inside of them. And there are placed throughout MGM casinos. There's a video I've tweeted out earlier of her actually showing up to MGM uh, resort and surprising people who were playing on her slot machines. But it's with, so, but it's with any, any casino that wants to buy them, isn't it? Or is it just, is it licensed exclusively to MGM casinos? I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, but it looks as if it's with um, MGM. Mm hmm. Uh, properties right uh, her her promotional deals have been through mgm with regards to the slot machines okay but regardless don't you think that um there's some type of you know like ethical responsibility especially if you consider yourself to be a journalist or a public figure to disclose that you have a financial tie to the hotel that's at the heart of this investigation and, and by the way i have a friend who had a slot machine similar to that and i'm not gonna say the name but um you make a lot of money having a slot machine with your face on it. Not kind of not kind of a lot of money, a lot a lot of money with a with a slot machine like that in. So it's not like she would have forgotten this. I mean, it's a great I didn't even think about that, but you you're you're absolutely right. I lived in Nevada. I know what kind of money goes to those slot machines. It's big money. Right. And it's just very unethical. I mean, people freaked out when George Stephanopoulos um who's a part of the Clinton Foundation or a donor at least, interviewed Hillary Clinton about the Clinton Foundation scale and, and didn't disclose the fact that he was a donor. Mm -hmm. How is this any different? How is Ellen DeGeneres getting you know, compensation from MGM and having her own slot machine deal with them any different from her not disclosing the fact that she's interviewing this guy who's like, the key witness in the, the worst mass shooting in U.S. history. Right. Like, they're just going to act like that's not important. And, and and when I think of hard-hitting journalists, Ellen doesn't pop up on the list very high. I mean, her show, it's a comedy show. It's right. not a talk show. It's a comedy show. She didn't even lead the show today with the interview with Jesus Campos and this, you know, this maintenance worker. She led the show talking about lesbian sex and kittens and toothpaste and Star Wars and... I, I swear to God. I mean, she was literally talking about hookers, drugs, lesbian sex, toothpaste, kittens, and, you know, fake sexual assault claims on her show today. She wasn't even. That's a wide ranging about... show. Now that's entertainment. Yeah, but that's <laughs> exactly it's entertainment. And it's insulting that they would put such a tragedy on an entertainment show. I mean, yeah. is this funny to them? Do they think it's funny? Is it lighthearted? And, you know, she was trying to make a joke out of like circling the map like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Like point me in the right direction. What am I doing with this map? Like trying to be her funny self, but it's just not a funny situation. Like 58 people died and there are people who are still in comas in the hospital recovering and she's just going to make a joke out of it or try and, you know, humorize right. the yeah. entire situation. It just, it's, it's bad taste. And right. well, a couple of people have point. some comments here for you, Laura. And by the way, Laura Loomer is here and you can also help her. She's, She's not out there. No, no one's got a big check. No one's writing her checks to to run around the country. She's out doing this um, and working and 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 uh, doing such a great job. Um, but she could use your help. And and you do have a, a, an account where people can can help you out a little bit, support you, right, Laura? Yes, I do. Um, I have two accounts. I have a free starter, which is pinned to the top of my Twitter. It's uh, freestarter.com slash Laura Loomer, but it's F-R-E-E-S-T-A-R-T-R, -E -E -R -R, without the E at the end. And then I also have a PayPal, because some people don't want to use Freestarter. Um, and it's paypal.me slash Laura Loomer. Okay. Let's see here. Um, 
Let's see. We got a bunch of people. And here. I'll be flying out to Vegas again this weekend, and I'll be there for another week investigating. So if you'd like to support my investigation, you can do so. I'm crowdsourcing everything. I'm not bankrolled by the mainstream media or any type of media organization. I'm 100% crowdfunded by the people. So please help her if you would, please. We'd appreciate it. James says, I think the security guard's lying. I think for the three days he disappeared, the FBI had him and scared the hell out of him. Um, Clint thinks he was there to build a narrative. Best yeah, says, it's a narrative. Oh. It's a narrative. And what's and the narrative is is what? What is it? What is it that they're trying well, to look, do? They're trying to MGM is is democratically owned, right? It's not a coincidence that you know this this guy is Jesus Campos. I I think that they are aware of the fact that he's an illegal that or his his status. I'm not going to say mm-hmm. he's an illegal alien because I I don't have the proof that he is. But if you're using a shared social, and we know this is a common practice in the Hispanic community, right? Mm-hmm. It kind of brings up the question as whether or not you're a legal citizen. So if they do know that he's not legal, which is why they scrubbed him from the system, then they're going to keep that under wraps. But the Democrats in this country would love nothing more than to use an illegal alien who's claiming to be a hero as, as an example of, oh, this is why we need gun control and this is why we need, you know, to open up the borders and bring all these dreamers and illegals in is because they're heroes, right? If it weren't for this guy, if he really does turn out to be an illegal. Mm-hmm. But it makes you wonder if MGM is so proud of this guy and he really is their star employee, why are they keeping him under wraps? There's something they don't want us to know. Okay. Laura Loomer is here on the Rusty Humphreys Rebellion. Let's see here. A couple other comments. Um, David says, we watch this, but I remember in history, it's the people, not we, the government, when we stand and do what's right for the country. I'm not sure what that means for us. Um, Clint thinks it was all planned out. Jerry said, oh, Jason says, great work, Laura Loomer. You're awesome and a great American. Yes, she is. Thank you. Uh, Jerry says, the whole Ellen DeGeneres show is a farce. DeGeneres is controlling the narrative. Hannity would have asked the wrong questions. I'm sure the Campos, exactly. I'm sure the Campos handlers would agree to that. Does one think that the show was scripted? Surely not. Not all Americans are snowflakes. The whole thing in Vegas always had a smell to it. Jeff Sessions, where are you? I mean, I, I don't believe that it didn't happen. I mean, I'd really believe people were killed. I, you know, there's some people say, oh, it wasn't really happened. It was just a fake thing. I don't buy that for a second. Do you? No, I mean, I know people who were there. I interviewed people on the ground who saw people get shot. I mean, this is not fake, but... But then again, look, this is a conspiracy theorist wet dream. Like when you don't have answers to a federal investigation and there's so many suspicious elements and all of these like questionable situations and like key uh, political figures. And then you, you throw in the ties that Stephen Paddock has to the government working for Lockheed Martin. Like obviously people are going to come up with a lot of theories. And I'm not going to discredit those individuals by calling them conspiracy theories because I don't think that it's wrong for people to have their own theories and speculations about what happened, especially when we're getting no answers, right? We're getting no guidance from these investigative bureaus that we're supposed to trust. I mean, it's it's really shameful that we're at a point in our, our country right now where we don't know whether to trust the FBI or ISIS. Okay, I mean, that's a pretty... pretty big claim isn't it i mean trust the fbi or isis that's a big yeah i know but who are we supposed to trust i mean isis says that isis makes the claim that they took responsibility the fbi says no that's not true we catch the fbi lying i mean we see with like the recent investigations that are coming out now regarding hillary clinton and the fbi and just like you know we saw what comey did we can't trust the fbi it's not like they're there for our best interests. it's not like they're there to really you know pursue justice and and do the right thing I mean, let's not be naive. It Mm -hmm. wouldn't be the first time that these law enforcement agencies and government agencies have lied to the American people or participated in a cover up. Okay, so So uh, I I just find it that I I sit I'm sitting here thinking to myself, wow, do I trust these deceptive FBI agents who have been lying to us and they intentionally lied about Stephen Paddock's license plate right when they knew who he was? Uh, They lied about the date of the check in. They've lied about so many things regarding this case and then you have isis coming out i I know it's a drastic comparison but we're at that point in this country where people don't know whether to trust isis or the fbi so Mm. can you really blame people for having a lot of these theories okay 
Um, so where is the next investigation going next? I mean, are, are you getting tired of it? I mean, heck, it was, all, it was, I mean, in American culture, that was two weeks ago. That was a long, long time ago, maybe three weeks. Holy moly, that's ancient history for Americans. Yeah, I mean, look, I get tired, but I can't let this go. I, look, the, the FBI and the, the LVMPD have suspended press conferences regarding the shooting. That's pretty disrespectful. Right. I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to let what happened in Vegas stay in Vegas. And the American public doesn't want to let that happen. And Mm -hmm. I don't want to let that happen. And if you have no motive and you don't even know what happened and you can't get your facts straight, how are you going to stop press conferences when there's so many unanswered questions? I mean, there are people who still haven't even been buried yet. Right. Mm -hmm. There are bodies that are still in the morgue that are waiting to be buried. And they're going to what close this investigation or not even take questions from the media. And it's not like the media really does a good job anyway, because they're totally complicit right. with the narrative that's being force fed to them. Yeah, the they media. Don't ask you, tough questions. Yeah, the media has done a terrible job in this one. Well, I mean, they haven't right. really covered this in, in any way, shape, or form. Well, all right, I have posted on the Facebook page Laura's a uh, PayPal uh, thing where you just go and, and donate a few dollars. You know, ten bucks, twenty bucks, hundred dollars. If you're uh, got a ton, give, give her a thousand bucks. Be nice. I bet you you'd appreciate that, wouldn't you, Laura? <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> all right um anything else that you got br- brewing anything else that we could keep an eye out for you or you're just out there working um i was helping out with um i used to work for project veritas so i was in their office this uh past day just helping them with their uh the part three release of american pravda so stay tuned uh lots of exciting things coming from project veritas in the works but like I said, I am continuing my investigation. I'll be flying back out to Las Vegas at the end of this week, and I'll be there for another week or so. So if you have any tips or you know of anyone who wants to meet with me and talk with me regarding this investigation, um, you know, I'm going to go out there. Just because they're not going to have press conferences doesn't mean I'm not going to doorstop some of these people and question them myself. Right. Good for you. Good for you. You're doing a great job. Laura Loomer is her name. And again, you can find her uh, PayPal account right here on Facebook. Uh, but it's, uh, again, paypal.me slash Laura Loomer. And then you're on Facebook and Twitter. Where do you want people to find you? I'm on Twitter at Laura Loomer, almost at 100,000 followers. So Good for you. That's awesome. You know, about 700 more and I'll be at 100,000. Yeah, you got the blue That's check. I can't, I can't get the blue check. I don't know what I got to do. I, I can't get the blue check on my Facebook or my Twitter. I, I was actually really surprised I got the blue check because they don't really like giving blue checks out to conservatives at Twitter. But uh, I'm also on Facebook at Laura Loomer Official. All right. Go get him, kiddo. Thank you for being here on the Rusty Humphreys Rebellion. I appreciate you. We'll talk to you again soon, okay? Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks, Laura. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, there's Laura Loomer. Go ahead. Goodbye. Thank you very much. She's uh, working her tail off. Doing a great job. Great job. Thank you, Laura. Okay. Uh, you know who else does a great job? And I'll get your comments. I'd like to know what you think about what Laura had to say. Do you think she's on to something? Or do you think that uh, it, uh, she's a crackpot? Do you think that this is some kind of crazy conspiracy? Or is it just the way that they're telling us? I am curious what you think. Uh, your comments right here. Uh, if you've got high blood pressure, and I think, was it 70 million Americans have high blood pressure? Is that, is that the right number? 70 million Americans have high blood pressure. That's right. And if you're one of those millions of Americans, and maybe your doctor has you on medicine, and you want to make sure that that high blood pressure doesn't uh, affect your life, it is a silent killer. It'll take you out. It can. Uh, the Zona Plus is a device that can and will help you. It it kind of looks like a phaser from Star Trek. What it actually is, is it's kind of shaped like a joystick from a fighter jet. Because they were doing research years ago, and they found that fighter pilots, as they squeezed on the joystick and moved it, that their blood pressure would go down. And so they created this device and a screen that tells you how hard you're supposed to squeeze, and for 12 minutes a day, heck, squeeze it while you're eating ice cream, I don't know, but you squeeze it 12 minutes a day, and it tells you how to do it on each hand, and it is amazing, it lowers your blood pressure, and it really works, I've done it, and it has helped me as well, I know other people that have done it too, uh, Orson Scott Card, the great author, As a matter of fact, we have a new podcast coming out tomorrow on our show called We Review Everything, we'll post that up there, and he talks about it. And we review the, the Zona Plus. Anyway, do yourself a favor. It's a 90-day money-back guarantee. Take my word for it. Give it a shot. If it doesn't work for you, it will. But if it doesn't work for you, 
get your money back if you're not completely satisfied. So go to zonaplus.com, find out all I have, zonaplus.com, zonaplus.com. Use the code word RUSTY, that's me, RUSTY, R-U-S-T-Y, and you get $50 off. Come on, you can't beat that. Zonaplus.com, zonaplus.com, zonaplus.com. Okay. Bunch of other stuff happened today. Take more of your comments here. Brenda says, be safe out there, Laura. Phil doesn't think we should trust the FBI. Linda thinks uh, Sessions needs to step up or step down. Linda says, uh, Rusty. And Laura, thanks for spreading the truth. You're welcome. James says, uh, you and Laura make a fine team. Thanks for honest reporting. She does a great job. She does. Um... Ian says they never released the tapes of the most camera videotape place in the world. Why? Because it's a cyst that attacked the Vegas casino owners. Hmm. Deb, Deb says, I was in the World Trade Center nine days before it went down. What I know for a fact was workmen in blue jumpsuits said they were working on heating and cooling systems and the elevator one was shut down. Our government is crooked. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't believe in a conspiracy in the World Trade Center. I don't. I know a lot of people do, but that's that's not my. That is not my thing. Uh, what else do we have going on here? William checking in from Wisconsin. Christine loves Project Veritas. Beth says great show. Mike says be careful, Laura. Thank you for what you're doing. Could Antifa be involved? You know that is. You know, my concern, whether it was that guy that was the shooter or somebody else, if indeed it was a left-wing thing, shooting at supposedly Trump supporters. I've said this before. I, I hope it's not the case. But if that was to be to come out and that was a thing, you know, um, that's the kind of thing that starts wars and, God forbid, anything like that happened. And I, I hope that, you know, I'm not, I don't want to see a conspiracy or cover up, but dang. Let me ask you this. Let's say it was something awful like that. And the reason that the government was being quiet about things was they don't want a civil war in the streets of America. Would you support a government cover up then? Shouldn't they try to tamp that down and make that a little bit quiet? Or no government governments ever. Curious. Nays is a first-time listener. Thank you, Nays. Beth says, I feel like we're living in the twilight zone. Lyndon, no. Beth, no. You wouldn't want to cover up or you, you wouldn't want the information to get out. That's what I... I do. would want the information to get out or I would not want the information to get out if it might cause a civil war. I don't want a civil war. God forbid. I'll get some more of your comments in a second. John McCain in the news. <laughs> As you may know, I'm not a big John McCain fan. I heard about this clip. Heard it was funny. Thought I'd share it with you here on the Rusty Humphreys Rebellion. In fact, Senator McCain, I mean, I want you to listen to how he responded to one of our reporters' questions. Has your relationship with the president frayed to the point that you are not going to support anything that he comes to you and asks for? Why would for? you say something that stupid? Why would you ask something that dumb? Huh? My job as a United States senator is a senator from Arizona, which I was just reelected to. You mean that I'm somehow going to behave in a way that I'm going to block everything because of some personal disagreement? That's a dumb question. Uh, my friend. My friends, I'm John McCain, my friend. That's a stupid question. By the way, let's not forget that John McCain was censured by the Republican Party of Arizona. He outspent his opponent like 20 to 1. That's a stupid question. Friend. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see uh, quickly your comments. Let's see. No cover up. No cover-up, no cover-up. They say no cover-up, no cover-up. I would never support a cover-up. No cover-up, no cover-up. Um, Debbie says, first-timer also. Glad to find uh, you and Laura. Thank you, Debbie. 
Um, no cover-up. Robert says those who would sacrifice privacy for security will have neither. They deserve none. William says, I would want to know what happens if they want to kill more. Luna says, oh, that song for John McCain. Um, Christine says, why wouldn't the government want a civil war? The socialist agenda has been pushed for so long, it's amazing. If the opposing party doesn't buckle or bow to everything coming or going, how else would you get your agenda passed? By creating a hostile environment, causing division, which is what's happening. Randy, by the way, is also a first-timer. Thanks, guys. We appreciate you. Um, Angela says, no cover-up. I wouldn't care if it caused a civil war. I won't lie down and take it. <sighs> guys, I love you. Okay? War is a lot worse than you may think it is. And I don't know. The idea that we think that, no, oh, it's just a civil war. It's no big deal. It's a big stinking deal. I'm no fan of cover-ups either. But I don't want to see Americans shooting each other in the streets. I don't want to see brother against brother. You know, the last civil war, you know, there was one battle, I believe, the Battle of Antifa. I believe we lost more men in the Battle of Antifa than we did. Uh, and, and Antietam, I'm sorry, Antietam. Antietam. I think we lost more men in the Battle of Antietam than we did in all of Vietnam. So, something to think about. Lyndon says the other fighter capitulate. Best says yes, Rusty, but the people are tired. Tired of the government cover-ups. James thinks we're in a war right now. It's not a lot worse. We're living in tough times, my friends. Doesn't mean that we give up or give in. I don't want to see a civil war. I'd like to see we have one party in our country that has just decided that if there's laws they don't like, they just ignore them. We have... Former directors of the FBI, or at the time, the director of the FBI, lying to the American people. We now have, we now have proof, absolute proof, that Vladimir Putin and Russia gave money to Bill and Hillary Clinton through their foundation for uranium. We know this for a fact, and it is silence from the mainstream media. You can't find it in the mainstream media. If Donald Trump did that, do you think the media would cover it? The answer is yes, and I would want them to. Just like if the former president and his Secretary of State wife did it, I would think the mainstream media would cover that as well. Look at what's happened with Harvey, Harvey Weinstein, Weinstein. They covered for this guy for 20 years. When do you stop covering for the Clintons, Democrats? Come on. We got to do what's best for our country, for our children, not just for your damn political ideology. Patricia says, "Would you please share this video? Share, 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 share. Yes, please. Would you? Would you please share the video? Would you please make a comment? Check in. Please give me some thumbs up, hearts. Maybe if you're sad or angry, uh, let people know here on Facebook. And while you're doing that, if you would please." Uh, support another one of our sponsors. It's a, it's a, and it's a good one too. It's one that that's wholesome and family oriented. It's called thetoymaker.com, and thetoymaker.com is folding paper toys that you make yourself with your kids. It's fun. They got holiday stuff and free toys and newsletters and books. It's from the workshop of Marilyn Scott Waters. And she says, welcome to my odd little world of paper toys and holiday cards and valentines and sunboxes, baskets and bags, origami and more, all for you to make. My goal is to help grown-ups and kids spend time together making things. My wish is to amuse and delight. Enjoy, says Marilyn. 
Great stuff for holidays. You go there and check it out. Got some kind of darn thing on my computer going on. Anyway, they got great things for holidays. And she has a newsletter. Doesn't cost you anything. Go check out the newsletter. Go check out the free toys. If you would sign up for a newsletter and just see what she has. If you've got kids or grandkids, as Marilyn likes to say, you know how kids spell love? T-I-M-E. Time. With you. Go to thetoymaker.com. It's thetoymaker.com. Thetoymaker.com. Okay. Patricia loves the toymaker.com. Thank you, Patricia. We love you too for supporting our great sponsors. Lyndon says George Soros just dumped $18 billion into leftist causes. Watch out, they're coming. Yeah, those are things that we've been, we have been warning people about. It's not been a joke. George Soros has done a very good job taking over the media by uh, creating. Uh, journalism schools with agendas and teaching journalistic uh, agendas. And it's been wrong. It's been wrong. But I will tell you that there are good things in life. And there are things to look forward to. And there are, there's love, happiness, family, You know, things around the corner that you don't even know what's coming up. We're going to be okay. Things are going to be great. I believe it. I don't believe the good are going to lose. The good is going to win. And we just have to know that we're going to stand up and stand tall and stand together and do what's right for our country, do what's right for our children, do what's right for our children to be our posterity. Because the only way we lose is if we give up. I'm never giving up. I'm here every night, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West. I ask you to uh, join me here on Facebook or my podcast. It's called the Rusty Humphreys Rebellion. You can find it at iTunes and Stitcher and other great places where they have fantastic podcasts. Kind of like Blunt Force Truth. That's another fantastic podcast hosted by the brilliant talk show host and great guy Chuck Woolery and the super genius Mark Young. And when I say super genius, I'm not just saying it. Mark Young is awesome. BluntForceTruth.com is where you find them and their podcast is there. Also at iTunes, Stitcher, and places where other great podcasts are found. Do, 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 do. Oh, I will try not to fall off my chair. Dermond. Dermond Anti-Itch Moisturizing Lotion. Dermatologist recommended, you know. And it's a great product if you've got seasoned citizen skin. And it's itchy, it's dry, it drives you nuts. Dermond is the product to get. Specially formulated for itchy, mature skin with moisturizers, skin conditioning agents, and Promoxine HCI to relieve itch and irritation. Visit Dermond.com and you can pick it up at your local Walmart, Walgreens, other great retailers. It's all there. Get this, you'll be glad you did. 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West. Thank you, Dermond. Thank you, Toymaker.com. Thank you, Zona Plus. Thank you, Wax RX. But most importantly, thank you for watching. Please tell your friends. Please share this on your Facebook page. Um, I can't tell you. It means everything. It really, really does. May God bless you, and may God bless America. My name is Rusty Humphreys, and we'll see you tomorrow night right here on the Rusty Humphreys Rebellion. Oh, by, by the way, I forgot to tell you, tomorrow night, you know who's going to be here? Milo. Milo will be here live tomorrow night, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West. You won't want to miss that. We'll see you then.